Do you have any storm warnings in the Dallas area for today? Have any of our storm chasers checked in yet? It's big. It's real big. They've never had anything like a mile and a half wide tornado. It would be far greater than anything that they've even dreamed of. The tornado was one and a half miles wide and, com and completely engulfing Dallas. It's not a question of if it's going to happen, but when it's going to happen. If that thing hits ground, we're in big trouble. The city of Dallas rises tall and defiant, right beside the convergence point of two massive weather systems. The area is called Tornado Alley, and it sees over 1,000 tornadoes a year. More tornadoes hit Texas than any other state. But so far, Dallas has escaped a direct hit. If we had a huge tornado hit the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and particularly Dallas, it would be one of the worst American disasters in history. The fastest tornado winds ever recorded were in Bridge Creek, Oklahoma in 1999. Winds of 301 miles per hour killed 26 people and left total devastation. But experts say the tornadoes can and will get worse. It's only a matter of time before conditions spawn a super tornado, one that is bigger, faster, and packs higher wind speeds than any before it. You are about to see what happens when a super tornado hits Dallas. The people here will first witness an outbreak of smaller tornadoes. Then when they think it's safe, the city will be torn apart by the biggest tornado ever seen. But right now, this Dallas day is just like any other. Toby, I'm tired of telling you, son. Let's go. Stop yelling at me. I'm not yelling. It is thought that the heat wave way. from the south could cause temperatures to soar as high as a century mark. As the weather on the day of the super tornado will start beautiful and clear. In the morning, the sun will shine. And by afternoon, there will still be little warning that Mother Nature is on the warpath. You're going to be late, and you're going to make Dad late, too. Let's go. Hold on. Just let me get my ball. This is a customer announcement. All passengers on flight 118 to Dallas, please report to gate 12. Hello? Hi, honey. Hey, babe. How's everything? All fine. Toby, get off to scouts, okay? No, we're just about to leave this minute. Toby! We better hurry. I know, we're just running a bit late. I'm gonna tell him I might be late picking him up, okay? My flight's not in yet. Really? What's the problem? Some storm out west. Yeah, something's brewing here, too. Listen, I better get to work. I'll see you tonight. Have a safe flight. Okay. See you later. The first sign that Dallas is in line for extreme weather comes from a small patch of darkening clouds in an otherwise clear sky. Three ingredients create the groundwork for the super tornado. First is warm, moist air pushing up from the Gulf of Mexico. Second is a blast of dry air rushing in from the Rockies. The zone at which they meet is called the dry line. 
the air on this boundary becomes unstable and starts to lift upwards, quickly creating a thunderstorm. But a third and final ingredient is needed to turn this into a tornado breeding ground, and this will come a little later in the day. Even in the early stages of an approaching storm, there are signs that things could get worse. Dad, what is that? I'm not sure. This doesn't happen very often, but usually it has been a water spout, which is a tornado in water that's produced fish falling from the sky. Water spouts are funnel-shaped clouds formed by powerful updrafts over water. If fish are swimming near the surface, the winds whip up the water and the fish with it. They are pulled up the column and into the cloud base. When the water spout hits land and dies, these creatures fall back to Earth, sometimes many miles away. As the day goes on, small thunderstorms begin to grow, pumped up by hot, moist air from an extreme heat wave in Mexico. With a constant supply of fuel, the storms billow upwards and spread out. High-altitude winds begin moving them east toward Dallas. But 30 miles away in the city, there is only one small clue. The wind is picking up. Have fun, Toby. Mom will be here to get you in about an hour. Okay. What are you doing here? Scouts is canceled. Didn't you see the sign? Emergency management team, the mayor's office, and emergency services are all based at City Hall. There are five people working in emergency management, but this can rise to hundreds during a crisis. Their offices are two floors beneath the ground. This is the start of a day that will test them all to the limit. Where's the chief? Dennis is running late, so that makes you the boss. Oh, man, Anna's headed straight for it. Where's Dennis? Are you listening? I just told you. He's running late. He'll be here in a minute. National Weather Service, please. Have any of our storm chasers checked in yet? No. Well, where's the storm now? This is James Abbott, Dallas. What's the situation with a storm out west? Has the FAA grounded any flights? building over Texas begin to explode when perfect disaster super tornado returns. People have experienced turbulence, but this thunderstorm will take a turn that makes this flight a terrifying ride. It's about to become a supercell. Uh, 
A supercell thunderstorm is rather rare, and unlike normal thunderstorms, a supercell has a lot of rotation within it. It's anywhere from three to four, maybe five miles in diameter. Not all thunderstorms become supercells. Differences in the speed and direction of the wind on the ground and at the top of the supercell are called wind shear. This creates updrafts causing the heart of the storm to rotate. It can transform thunderstorms into supercells. However, only 30% of known supercells ever turn tornadic. But predicting if this storm will produce a tornado is for the moment beyond our technology. Making a call on whether to warn residents or evacuate them is every city emergency manager's nightmare. Bringing a city of six million people to a standstill will cost a fortune. Not doing so may cost lives. Okay, folks, I know your time's precious, so I'll keep it short. Basically, we're getting reports there's a big storm system building out west. It could be tracking towards Dallas. Wait a minute, it's actually tracking towards the city? Well, no, sir, not yet, but today's weather conditions are perfect for a tornado. Our storm chases are heading out west to have a look. Any touchdown, Jen? I sat here last week while you told us the storm was tracking towards the city. Ten minutes later, it's gone. Disappears off the scope. When you can give me some reliable information, you call me. But even with the most advanced technology, tornadoes are some of the most difficult storms to predict. They can strike more so without warning or with very little lead time warning just before it occurs. One thing is for sure. There are now several storms approaching Dallas. All of them are powerful supercells. None has yet produced a tornado, but they are still dangerous in other ways. of this extreme turbulence is a phenomenon called a microburst. Twenty thousand feet above commercial aircraft, the warm air that has been sucked up through the center of the supercell begins to cool. It then starts to fall at phenomenal speeds, back down on the outside of the supercell. Planes are in the most danger around takeoff and landing when the rushing air hits the earth with such force that it bounces, kicking planes higher. Unwary pilots attempt to compensate for this sudden burst, and once they get through it, can find their planes dangerously close to the ground. This is one reason it is vital that the National Weather Service monitor the skies. While balloons measure the temperature of each layer in the air, they also search out extreme temperature differences that can fuel approaching storms. Radar provides the speed of a storm and shows whether it is spinning, but even that won't give a full picture. Part of the problem with radar is that it can undershoot or overshoot a storm depending upon where it's at. And it does so at like six minute intervals. So imagine, opening your eyes and closing them, and then you're not gonna open them for another six minutes. You're not gonna know what is happening in between. Storm spotters like this one are usually the first to see storms of this size reach maturity. The clouds take on a very distinctive shape. What happens next is critical. EOC, come in, this is Chuck. EOC, come in, this is Chuck with a wall cloud sighting at Westover Hills. It's big. It's real big. There are very specific signs that experts can look for in cloud formation that signal whether these storms are potential killers. Sir, so what I'm going to be looking for is a wall cloud. This is a lowering at the back end of the thunderstorm. And I'm going to watch that wall cloud and see if it begins to rotate. Call us on the webcam so we can have a look. Man, it's massive. What's going on out there?
Okay. This baby's on the move. I'm gonna track her. Once it's on the move, the tornado's strength is estimated by the damage it leaves. This is called the Fujita scale. An F1 tornado starts at 75 miles per hour and can blow the tiles off a roof. An F2 kicks in at 113 miles per hour and can destroy mobile homes. An F3 starts at 158 miles per hour and uproots trees and rips the roofs off houses. An F4 picks up at 208 miles per hour and can lift a train. But the real killer is an F5. With winds up to 318 miles per hour, it can destroy anything in its path. The only thing faster is the shock wave from an atomic bomb or a super tornado. As the supercells approach the suburbs, they suck in millions of gallons of warm, moist air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. But even a few miles ahead of the storm, there is little indication of what is about to happen. Hi, this is Anna. Leave a message after the beep. Hey, honey, it's me. You must be on your way to pick up Toby already. Listen, there's a big storm out west. There's a big storm out west of Dallas. You two get home as quick as you can. I'm going to be working for Dennis another couple of hours, and then I'll get home as quick as I can. All right. Love you. Coming up, pieces fall into place. He's out! For the birth of a super tornado. West of Dallas, small tornadoes are beginning to touch down. In the suburbs, powerful gusts of wind are starting to cause damage. Short center field, right through the gap. And the crowd is going wild as he heads for home. He's out! Rush hour is just starting. As people head out onto the streets for the daily commute home, they may not know that this is a most dangerous time of day. What is going to cause the most fatalities? Is a tornado hitting at the worst possible time in the worst possible place? How about rush hour, 5 o'clock? Interstates are jam-packed with people. You know, tornadoes maximize in terms of numbers around 5 o'clock. The heat that has been building all day is the final ingredient for the super tornado. Heat provides the maximum fuel. Look at this. 24, 25 reported touchdowns between Oklahoma and here. This is serious. We could be hit. I think we should think about sounding the siren. Have there been any touchdowns in Dallas County? Well, you saw what Chuck was chasing. If there's anything in the air like that, it could hit Dallas County. I, it could miss us entirely. Yeah, but that's too big a risk. If we don't sound these sirens... Yeah, you're right. Okay, it's your call. In the last five years, Dallas tornado warning sirens have only been sounded three times. All those occasions were false alarms. The decision to sound them is never taken lightly. Okay, people, we're going to sound the sirens in Dallas County. It's about to get a little bit tough around here. I need everyone to stay focused. Most wall clouds don't produce tornadoes. These supercells are short-lived, but as long as they remain active, they can multiply. There are many supercells that can develop. You can get six, eight, ten supercells in a row, and they can come through like waves of aircraft 
and keep tearing up the ground. Before a tornado, the weather will be unstable, sunny and cloudy, dark then light, with storms coming and going. Warning is in effect across the southwest of Dallas. A developing storm that has already caused numerous Toby, tornadoes. Toby, cut it out or I'll take that ball away from me for good. to grow in strength as it moves across northeastwards, causing a strong possibility All right, give of hail outbreaks in surrounding yeah. counties. People are advised to stay indoors if at all possible until the storm passes. As what is it? Shh, hold on. are now closed until after the weekend. Ah. Thousand feet above ground, water droplets freeze and stick together in the form of hail. In a powerful supercell, the updraft can be over 100 miles per hour. As they rise, they pick up more droplets, sometimes forming lumps seven inches across. Eventually, these lumps of solid ice become too heavy and fall back down to the ground. Texas hailstorm, even if it's only pea-sized, you are very frightened. And it comes down hard, and it comes down fast, and you feel like someone's shooting at your windows. Large hail usually falls toward the front of a supercell, which means the most dangerous part of the storm is still to come. believe this but our car was just hit by hailstones the size of grapefruit well I could take a look see if I can't get you fixed up for the ride home oh, that would be so kind services until we know where the danger is. Oh, it could hit the stadium. we got to get these people out of there. Yeah, they've already started evacuating. We've got thousands of people to move. It's going to take some time. Yeah, you're right. We've got reports coming in all across the county here. There are 10, 20 tornado touchdowns on the outskirts of Dallas. You need to get yourself... James, come on, out. pick up. You need to get yourself covered. Guys... Anyone? An outbreak of tornadoes hit the Dallas suburbs. Before the unthinkable happens, perfect disaster, Super Tornado returns after this. Windshield will still take a few hours. And if you're in a real hurry, I got a truck over in the garage. Could do you a good rate. It's up to you.
Kid okay? Yeah. Did you say you had a truck? The multiple tornado outbreak has churned up miles of land, property, and people. But the twisters have disappeared as quickly as they arrived. But now the unthinkable begins to take shape. As the supercells die, they leave behind a mass of dry, cool air. Harmless on any other day than today. It's rush hour in Dallas, and west of the city, a new storm has formed along the dry line boundary and has begun to feed on the energy left by the dying supercells in front of it. In less than an hour, the situation in the city will go from bad to worse. The storm seems to have passed as people report in new Okay, it looks like the worst is over, people. The fire department has an additional seven units on its way out to the suburbs right now. What do we have in the way of leaks or fire? Chief, sorry to interrupt. This may not be over yet. The National Weather Service thinks the worst is still yet to come. I think they're right. Information from the National Weather Service has revealed something new and potentially far more dangerous. A new supercell is heading towards Dallas at 20 miles per hour. It has absorbed all the rotational energy left from the dying supercells in front of it and is now getting an extra boost from the heat of the day. This unique combination acts like a turbocharger, swelling the supercell to a massive 25 miles wide. Tornadoes just don't simply occur out of just any thunderstorm. Usually there's a setup that occurs. Typically in the morning, there's a rain shower or something that sets up a boundary, and then later in the afternoon, the supercell develops and uses that boundary to its own advantage at producing the big tornado. The skies may look clear, but the storm is now only 20 minutes away. James, what is that? See that big supercell? It's moving along the boundary the old storms left behind? Yeah. That's a perfect breeding ground for new tornadoes. Man, that thing's huge. I've never seen anything like it. Let's put a call into the chasers and see what it looks like at ground level. Right, but remember, most supercells don't form new tornadoes. And we could be fine. Can it hit downtown or not? As the ultimate supercell approaches the city, the instability increases and the potential for a super tornado grows by the minute. What? What, what is it? Chief, this is really serious. If that thing hits ground, we're in big trouble. All right, first, we need to sound the sirens again. Um, Second, we need to issue more radio warnings to get those people off the streets. Now listen, third, we need to stop evacuating the stadium, tell everyone to get in the bathrooms and underneath the stands. If they get out in the parking lot, they don't stand a chance. And fourth, we need to hold back our rescue teams. We've got injured people out there, James, that need treatment right now. I have to get my emergency services to them right now. Where's your boss, man? I no, get... no, no, listen, listen. What good are our rescue teams if they get caught up in a tornado? We need to hold back and see how this thing develops. Okay. We got out there and started our operations before the tornado was over. We'd be in trouble. Then we need somebody to come save us. So we'd hunker down to it, went by, and then had to go out and assess the damage. Waiting would be hard because I know uh, people are in some dire straits at the time. But we're not any good to anybody dead. Okay. All right, listen up, people. First and foremost, I need all the hospitals to activate their disaster plans immediately. I need fire and rescue on high state of readiness right now. One of my long-standing concerns has been a tornado hitting a venue packed with people. Having 50, 70, 100,000 people packed in here. You're going to have a lot of disaster happening just in one place. Um, 
Then it happens. Horizontal rolling air is tilted toward the ground by a strong downdraft from the supercell. This is the moment the super tornado is born. A powerful vortex of spinning air that is only visible because of the moisture from the clouds inside it. Objects in high winds it would be almost like shrapnel from a bomb. A 300 mile an hour wind armed with debris becomes an unstoppable force destroying everything in its path. surface that can be seen from space. When the mega tornado hits Dallas, if it's a mile and a half wide, it will actually cover the entire downtown area from one end to the other. On this path, the super tornado would destroy two hospitals, 44 schools, three stadiums, and 35,000 homes. And the math on it is pretty easy. That's about 56,000 people actually living there. It's about 220,000 people actually working there. Wrapped around $12 billion of downtown Dallas real estate are 20 miles of freeway with over 200,000 vehicles in rush hour traffic, now caught in the super tornado's path. No, the cars are not OK. The freeway is being. Where are we going? Once the tornado hits downtown, there will be little anyone can do. You would see things like trees being uprooted, you'd see cars being lifted in the air, but you wouldn't see the ultimate horror. And the ultimate horror is when a tornado that size hits downtown Dallas, which is all glass, and then what you'll see is shards of glass going in every single direction, and that's deadly. All you'll hear is this roar. And then what happens is that these streets that you see around me become wind tunnels. And cars will start to pass you by. The debris will start coming over you and around you. So what happens is it's like 
a rotating fog bank of flying debris. That makes finding shelter in a city of glass deadly. Get right into the middle of a skyscraper and your odds of surviving are good. But if you are caught anywhere near the windows, those odds go down to zero. These buildings are designed to lose the glass and save the frame inside. Unfortunately, people are inside these buildings when that happens, and wind will actually blow right on through the building, including the people, and take them out with it. Um, okay, we are under 75 and Main Street West and L. I love you. Bye. To delete this message, press... Settle down, people. Okay, I'm sorry I'm late. But we just got Doppler readings from the university putting the wind in this at 350 miles per hour. This is unprecedented. 350 miles an hour. What does that uh, make us an F6? F5, F6. Doesn't really matter so long as people uh, know it's coming. What are you doing? Where do you think you're going, James? Just hit the stadium. It's heading to the Dallas suburbs. Based on that, I reckon you got about 10 minutes before it hits downtown. What are you, out of your mind? You can't just leave, James. You know better than to leave in the middle. My wife and kid are stranded. Do you have things covered here now? You're not leaving this building, James. Do you have things covered here now? Thank you very much. Okay. But leave right now. Yes. We'll be fine. Just make sure you drive parallel to the tornado. Good luck. The Super Tornado churns through downtown Dallas. The perfect disaster Super Tornado returns. Is there a safe place to survive a Super Tornado? Find out now. 350 mile an hour winds, the damage this super tornado will cause is incomprehensible. I've seen where these projectiles are 100 miles an hour, go through, and they're 60 miles an hour on the outbound. I've seen a two by four in the middle of buildings that have come through several walls. It's almost like a domino effect of going through and churning through the city. crashes into downtown, tearing up everything in its path. The only thing to do is try to get into a building. Failing that, get parallel to the tornado as it moves west to east. But you have to hope it doesn't change direction.
after the mega tornado goes through downtown Dallas, it's going to go through the eastern part of the city, which is residential. And these houses that you see behind me are going to be leveled right to the ground. Nothing left. A safe room is the only thing that might save your life in winds of 350 miles per hour. Mom! Okay? Protected by eight inches of reinforced concrete, these emergency shelters are designed to withstand enormous pressures from the outside. As the super tornado grinds through the suburbs, it can end quickly. It actually ropes out. Now, when a tornado ropes out, it usually lingers a little bit on the ground, maybe it gets sporadic in terms of its damage capability, and then lifts from the ground up. But there is a sting in the tail. For up to an hour, debris may still fall from the sky. Oh my God, it's all gone. They've never had anything like a mile and a half wide tornado. It would be far greater than anything that they've even dreamed of. And it would be totally devastating. It may take generations for the city to recover again. The super tornado may not happen today. It may not happen tomorrow. But one thing scientists are sure of is that it will happen one day. No amount of preparation can prevent extremes of nature. But what we learn from them is how best to limit the human suffering they cause.